And welcome. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Long Range Planning Committee meeting of June the 7th, 2023. Our first item on the agenda this morning is the review of minutes of May 3rd. Any comments, motions? Move to approve. Thank you, Rick. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Marvin, second. Uh, any discussion? Clarifications. I just know I was not in attendance, so I will abstain from this vote. Likewise. Okay, thank you. Uh, if no other comments, all in favor, please raise your hand. I think we're good. That's three. We have two abstentions. Any three abstentions? Are there any uh, no's? Seeing none. Um, that has passed. Next item on the agenda is the review of minutes of May 25th. I have one comment, and that is in my name that G is uh, lowercase for the uppercase for the. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 it's okay. <laughs> That's okay. And can I, can I get a motion before we continue discussion, please? <laughs> Motions. Thank you, Portia, and a second over there. Thank you, Marvin. Uh, any additional discussion? All right, seeing none, all in favor? Let's see, one, two, three, four. Any, any no's? Any abstentions? We have two abstentions. Motion passed. All right, the third item this morning is to review and discuss possible recommendations to the Ordinance Committee regarding the Commercial Design Standards Draft Ordinance Landscape. Um, I would ask Autumn to address this, but if you would, before you start, um, I have two comments regarding this, uh, this item. One is the easy one. Can we get your paperwork today with the draft attached to the minutes of this meeting so that anybody who goes online can see the draft of what we're discussing this morning. Yes, it's actually in the agenda for the town. Okay. But it wasn't hey, I'm just so thinking it's that. It's not in both places. Right. You know, just in order to kind of keep it complete, yes. I think that would be a good idea if we did that. Uh, yeah. The second, in a very similar um, reason, um, I would like, if you would, Adam, in your introduction of this, would you explain your process of how you went about doing this? Again, for the same reason, if anybody were to watch uh, sure. in the future, it might help them better understand what you did because there's a ton of work here. And um, I think everybody should be able to appreciate how you went about this because it's an excellent job. So thank you. And I, I have one further request, more in line with the first one. When you do a red line like this, could you also include the final document um, with comments are with, effectively with the, the red line already been accepted? Not this one. Unfortunately, the way these are, these are the most things. It would be, maybe when I explain what it is, it makes more sense, but it's not a red line. Okay. The next version, we can make this. This doesn't make sense. I can give you the red line. Okay. Okay, then I'll, I'll be interested to hear the process here. Then, yeah, the process will be it's, more important. It's a little bit different. Just yes. to be clear, we're going to post things on the website today, but the narrative is in detail. Is that correct? Are we asking her to put the narrative on the process form today? Yes. 
You want, oh, I don't want to talk to you. Yeah. I can talk about it. Yeah, I just, yeah, you talk how, about it. just, yeah, just talk about okay. how you did this. Okay. You know, a couple minutes. I'm not looking yeah. for. <clears throat> it's the same way we're doing. I think it's to save it this time. I can. And I believe I know what you did, but other people may not. <laughs> Well, I can pull it up on my computer, but the Zoom world will not see it. Oops. Yeah, I can't. I can't show. I mean, I could try. Should I leave and come back? Maybe you join first. Yeah. I think it's because you joined first and my administration doesn't win. We're going to figure it out eventually. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> um, <laughs> Technology, friend of the phone. It's just, it's <laughs> tough, as we jinx ourselves every day. It doesn't every time we have one of these meetings, it doesn't matter um, what we do. So, for the design standards, we have the commercial design standards that exist, and I gave you all um, a word copy um, that sort of was perfect, but there's sometimes some weird typos and ends and ends a few months ago, and then we also have online. So I've been trying to capture the information that's in there, that body of work, that's the commercial design standards, and then capture what we have in the site plan standards. And a lot of it is the same. A lot of it is um, almost the same. And then some of it is different. So when I've gone through and done these compilations, um, the black text, and Peter, I think you're, you're colorblind, aren't you? I am, yeah. I thought yeah. about that last time. Yeah. And I'm not sure if there's a way. No, this is actually okay. I'm re I'm red, green, colorblind. Okay, so perfect. yeah, this is a, a, a good way of doing it. Yeah. Perfect, because I actually, last time I thought about how to make it easier for you to see. But the black is from chapter 405. So it's existing language that we have um, in chapter 405. And then the green is proposed. So it's brand new language, proposed. And the blue is what we have in commercial design standards today. So you'll see a mixture. And what I've done is I've tried to reorganize everything into what I think flows a little better into combined sections and to create some continuity within the site plan ordinance. This um, flow, is very similar to the flow of what is proposed for architectural standards for materials. It'll be very similar to how uh, lighting. So it'll all sort of have the same order um, purpose and then anything about the plan and so on. So will we be will be amending the site plan review um, ordinance? Mm -hmm. Will we be getting rid of the commercial design standards? Piece by piece, we will. We'll okay, be striking it. out, uh, and that will be a red line that you'll see. But it's basically just. Get right. rid of everything that's in here piece by piece, and it'll take probably about twelve months to get through it all. I was going to say it's, it's, it's meshing yeah. the two and then codifying the commercial design standards, and then adding to, strengthening, changing a little bit, 
for instance, um, in the, in the in state though, is there is simply chapter 405 of the town ordinances for site plan review, and there won't be a design commercial design document. There'll all be one yeah. document. Got it. Yes. And they'll be uh, required. Got it. Cool. But we have a good, you know, in like lighting, we talked about lighting sustainability um, committee and our lighting standards still say we recommend metal halide lighting. Yeah. And so we don't, right? So those are the kind of things like, <laughs> so there's some minor tweaks in here. I have not proposed a lot of changes. This is more of just a compilation. What is proposed that came from conservation commission is a new revised plant list. So that is, that was sort of the um, <laughs> beginning of this for landscape to be the first one. Mr. Chair, may I ask a question? For maybe only me, but generally speaking, can you put in a sentence, no more than two sentences, what, when you began this process, the goal was? Sure. So the goal of this entire process is to combine the commercial design standards and Chapter 405 site plan ordinance into one cohesive document that gives the planning board what they and planning staff what we need to adequately review projects. Thank you. It, it also eliminates the discrepancies between the two that existed. Appreciate it. And it comes generally under the goal in the comprehensive plan that we simplify our ordinances. Yeah. Yes. And that we strengthen, right? So that we give more of a exactly. thou shall rather than we recommend sort of tone to the document. Yeah. Because the design standards were recommendations. They were not yeah. something you had to do mm -hmm. as opposed to the ordinances you have to. Right. As I understand it, those were three, possibly four goals. Uh, which is ambitious. Yes. That's why it's going to take some time. And that's why I propose we do it piece by piece. So just focus on one at a time and then um, get the format that we like and then work our way through it. Yep. So it's not overwhelming. Yep. It's overwhelming to think about the whole thing at once. Right. I think that suits my needs, if you will. So if you wanted to move on, feel free. Okay. So my intention was just to um, go through the landscape standards first um, and see if there's any opportunity, anything that you don't understand that we would like to add to it. So that was my intention for this first part. And then we'll go through uh, commercial design standards if we get there. It's the same way. You mentioned um, corrections on page nine. It says trees shall be resistance, and I'm assuming it should be resistant. Okay, give me one second. Oh, yeah, there we go. Militant trees. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Yeah, they're protesting. Okay. Yeah, if you see any weird um, typos, I'll take uh, responsibility for some of them, but some of them are just oh, yeah. because the way they come in oh, on I, the document. I know, I know. But yes. I just noticed that. <laughs> okay, so where is it? About? Page nine, um, about mid page. Trees shall be resistance. It should be resistant. Okay. But that was just that was the only one I particularly noticed. Okay. So the first part um, is just the purpose, and I tried to capture the purpose document. And I think this is a good example. Of, you'll see the black, the second paragraph. It's in the site plan on it, but it's also the blue strikeout, right? So it seems like over the years that the site plan ordinance has captured some of the things from the commercial design standard, but maybe because of we didn't even have a word set of them, maybe we just didn't do away with them at the time. So we've sort of created this redundant document. So um, when you see the strikeouts, that's what I am taking those into consideration that they're already captured. So got it organized into purpose and then landscape plan required um, foundation and wall planting. And so trying to capture um, what we have and what made sense. Like for instance, on foundation and wall plantings here on the screen, uh, planting beds are recommended. So I included the word required 
So that's in green, that's proposed, um, but those sorts of smaller things um, are included in there. So if you see any things that you say we disagree and we might click that, keep it as is or change it. So is it safe to assume that if you added any language that wasn't in either document, it's in green? Yes. Is there a way to indicate language that no longer falls in either document? Or are you comfortable in saying that there is no reference to language that was in one of the documents that no longer exists in the new document? I don't know if I'm making myself clear. So if there was something that existed and I didn't think it was appropriate to keep, it'll be shown as a strike through. Okay. It's all in there, but it's a strike through, either blue or black. Oh, it would be a black strike through. It would be a black strike through. Okay. It's a site plan and a yep. blue strike through. So I kept all the words. <laughs> um, okay. Yes. Okay. And that's, that's why, Peter, to your point, like this yeah, is no. a difficult red, it's not a standard red yep. line. To... Yes. You're really creating a new document. Um, yes. yeah. in, in essence, you're coming to show you how I got there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The ads were obvious, but as I was going down through this, it was hard to determine if something was totally eliminated. God, it would be a strike through. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. It didn't delete anything uh, and not put it down. Yeah. But I would just, as I was reading down mm -hmm. through this, anytime you struck through something, I was trying to find where it fell otherwise in the document to see if we had physically eliminated things. And that that just was a little bit more of a challenge. Okay, okay. Maybe I can do something like, a, I'll think about it, maybe like a bold if it's totally deleted <laughs> rather than a duplication. Or yeah, yeah, okay. It's, I'll, think, I'll think if there's a way to do that. Rick? If the, if the goal here is to create an entirely new section or sections of the site plan review ordinance is it really necessary that we see what taken out and why don't we just start with a clean board you know new section why do we have why is it so important to why is it important to see the strike outs and all that stuff and we stuff came out i think it's important for the the process so you see where it came from so it's not just staff rewriting the whole ordinance um, I wanted you to see that. I wanted you to see that one of my 90% of my goal is just to create one clean document, and the other 10% is to add the new plant list and to do a few tweaks okay. like required instead of like. Yeah. Um, I'm having a hard time finding a site plan review on this slide. It's 405. 405B. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is it again? 405B. If you go just to government and ordinance, I'm looking at chapter four or five zoning ordinance, but I'm not. It's not for it's not that one. It's by itself. You'll have to go out of oh, that. Okay. It doesn't it. matter. Not important. Then. <laughs> so let's see if we keep going. Um, after, if, after I reviewed this, oh, I was okay. sort of hoping, and I, I, maybe this is. Uh, irrelevant in a certain way, but uh, I was hoping, and I think you're doing it, but hitting the highlights uh, going through and showing us really what you're talking about. Yes. Thank you. And stop me as we go. This one is the first one, so it'll probably be a little more painful to get comfortable with, but this is how we plan to do them all with you. The next one will be architecture and then we'll have um, lighting from sustainability. So sometimes we'll have other committees that have input before they get here. Um, so this one I do suspect will be a little bit more like, oh, okay, this is this is autumn's madness of how you know, to get us through this. Um, and then, yeah. Well, know, it's, it seems very democratic. I mean, there's green, there's blue, there's black. <laughs> I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking for you to be more prejudicial and say what, what, what's okay. really going on. Pardon me. So again, it's just the way it's organized. Um, 
The only change here in buffer yards and screening is adding uh, the ability for grade changes and walls, because sometimes grade changes can be used as a buffer. I, th I think the next version of this document is going to be closer to what I think you're looking for and what Peter is looking for, but we needed to get it's oh, an I'm, intermediate I'm all, step. I'm all for it. Yep. Yep, the next version will just be, well, what do you want the next? So no, I don't know if the next version will just be all of the strike gone and yes. it'll just be a final yeah, version. Yeah, no, right? more of a final version. Yeah. Understanding that the intent is to get rid of the commercial design standard document and then consolidate it in the ordinance. That's the steer I needed. So, yep. Yeah, we're good. Okay. okay. Let's see. Um, there's not a lot. Again, uh, just in the buffer, in the organize it. <clears throat> I'm not sure how much detail you want us to go into this one, but um, in the spirit of an ordinance mm -hmm. um, under buffer yards and screening route one quarter, um, this 15 foot buffer may include um, page, page, uh, sorry, page four. Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, so I, I'm, I'm doing a quick screen here on sort of what I would think would be ordinance language, which is more proscriptive. Um, and, <clears throat> and in this instance, you're saying 15 foot may include trees, grass plantings, as well as sidewalk, et cetera. That may is an odd one for the ordinance, as opposed to what it must or what it shall do. Okay, so I can add a minimum at least. There's yeah, a or a minimum, exactly. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And a lot of this, um, I'll lean on. <laughs> planning board to know where you might have gotten into sticky situations to um, needing more teeth to the ordinance. <clears throat> Looking at you, Rachel. Yeah, and, <laughs> and the answer is you get rid of May. <laughs> so anywhere that we see that shall include elements of. Yeah, exactly. Right. So that's the that would be the question if you change if you just change May to shall because not every buffer needs a fence and right. not every buffer needs right. all of those things. Yeah. So that's why I said shall include elements of maybe so that this um, flexibility is going to have some some clarity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So let's see, we're down to parking lot landscaping. This one still fresh in my mind from Monday evening meeting. Um, Fascinating meeting in the book. This one, parking lot landscaping. Um, this is another one that on the bottom of the page, page five, the scale and impervious area of parking lots with more than 15 spaces shall be broken up with trees, landscape islands. But it doesn't say at what rate it has to be broken up. Um, and so this would be maybe an opportunity to add more specific language or keep it this way so there's some flexibility. Um, I've in the past had some ordinances that would be, you know, one island required every 10 years. So have some parameters to work around. We tend, this one tends to get tricky for us. The other thing I've observed on this one, and this it might be um, thing, the landscape plan is required for ten or more parking spaces, but this is scale and impervious areas of more than fifteen shall be broken up with trees. Mm -hmm. So if that's intentional, got it. But do we want to have the same number in both sections? Um, uh, they're different. Yeah, it could be yeah. consistent. Um, this um, is again, when you see a number referred to in Mm -hmm. Close proximity, but different. You always just ask the question. Sure. So. so this one, I, I concur. Though I think it should be a bit more prescriptive. So, for example, you could have something like um, at least X percent of the total area shall be um, consistent of landscape services. Well, we do have that on the next one, and that's one we get stuck with too because it is hard to calculate what parking lot landscaping yeah. includes. So that's why I was thinking if we sort of the parking islands a bit more, because we could do, um, so I'm thinking we add in one for 10, one for 15 spaces. It's a little different here because of snow storage, right? So I don't want to prescribe like what I know because I've never had to deal with snow storage. And I know islands get in the way of plowing. 
Um, so I'm leaning on. Yeah, I just said one for the fifteen. One for fifteen. Okay. At that. So. We have the, the I have to say, you said one for fifteen. Does that mean that that when you hit sixteen, you lot of is talking space sixteen must actually be an island, or mm -hmm. or at sixteen you need to create two eight slot eight spot islands, something like that. Yeah. Uh, you're going to get questions, but mm -hmm. once folks get used to it, sure, and understand that the planning board is going to hold them to it. It'll be required. <laughs> and I think actually that's where the landscape plan requirement comes into play. So when you hit 16, you're not going to create just one orphan spot. Your landscape plan should be rational and create rational islands of parking. So, okay, this one. I think the only thing that I'm finding slightly, I love the smile, by the way. <laughs> uh, I, the, the one thing that has always bothered me, even in my time on the planning board, is this. We determine the number of spaces based on several criteria, how many parking spaces you need. And I think of places like none such brewing, which has parking all over the damn place. And then you com you compound it with snow removal. I don't understand why we don't have designated snow removal areas, snow storage, snow storage, and not have it in any way, shape, or fashion minimize the amount of spaces we say that area needs, because. If we say we need 20 parking spaces for that particular building, yet turn around and use five of them for snow storage. That'd be a pretty bad winter. We, we're creating a problem, potentially. I would say the, the exception to that would be when you have a restaurant where the parking is determined by seats. And if during the winter, they don't have outside seating, so there's an offset of, of that. Well, we don't actually yeah. allow snow storage on the parking lots on site land. So you have to designate a spot. And it's usually in your landscape area. Yeah, it, 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 it usually conflicts with the landscape. It yeah. frequently conflicts yeah. with the landscape area. We do require so, snow storage. Um, I, I'm not clear that we have a measure that says, okay, that's enough for the size. Usually what we push for and get is an agreement to stop removing the snow. Sure. Rather than letting yeah. it sit in a giant pile at the end of the parking lot. <clears throat> I mean, I don't want to say that the last four or five years, I, I'm hoping that the last four or five years is more indicative of what we're going to get for snow, because we used to get a lot more. Right. Mm -hmm. So that requirement, I think, for storage space is probably reducing. Um, and we're going to have the unusual crazy storms. I get that. All I'm just, I guess my thought process is as we go around and we're actually looking at this more closely, should we have some kind of requirement that <laughs> says this is where snow storage should occur on, at this facility, or should we have a square a, a, a square footage requirement of some sort? Yeah, right. Perfect. That's what I wrote. I'm like, that's a great. We can add it in uh, landscaping and, and in parking, and then need to calculate mm -hmm. what that means for for each parking lot. Yes, and then if they can't do it on site, then they have to agree with us an agreement to have snow removed. Have it removed. I like it. Are you are you talking about creating a separate criteria? So yes. you have separate yes. square. So a, yes. Another little section about snow removal and and on the property you will have a set square footage, square whatever designated for that that is not landscape and is not parking. Right. Okay. Or or if it is in landscape, it's in a certain area. It's identified. It's perennials it's, and then it's it, or or it's on the grass area. No, it's right. off the parking lot. Not a bunch of a pile of snow on the parking lot. Okay, so there is crossover though. It's Could not be, yes. literally. 
a separate, except not cross over the parking. Correct. Okay. Well, I, and I think that addresses your concern in terms of restaurants with outside seating. And if, if we had had that for Costco, we would have been able, if we had had that sort of regulation for Costco, we would have been able to eliminate the first row of parking. So that's basically where they're planning on putting the snow, putting the snow. Is, is the first yeah. row of parking along main road. Okay. Yep. Uh, and we we could have allowed them to do that, but not use that as parking. Uh, yeah. It could have been landscape. It could have been seasons. could have been grass. Yep. Yeah. Some sort of yeah. Some sort of Because we allow. I mean, we actually, and I, I didn't see it removed, but we allow for show me the parking space you don't have to build it out today but should it become necessary you have the room to do it mm -hmm. we allow that now so we, we did it monday night yeah yeah so yeah okay i just have a process question mm -hmm. um at some point before it goes to council are we going to hold like we used to do long long ago when we were doing um the amendments in the previous comprehensive plan are we going to have an open house or a, a session that we preview this with with the um, developers or homeowners and things like that that are affected by it? I think when it's appropriate, sure. Um, but is that going to be us? or uh, I would suggest, and you guys help me out, from the, the last time the Long Range Planning Committee or CPEC. Um, yeah, went through implementation. Yeah, yeah. Every, before everything went to... Yeah. Um, Council after they were done, they hosted just an open house for people mm -hmm. to come in and view it. Yep. And that way we got some feedback before it went to council. Correct. And if we need or if we see legitimacy mm -hmm. in their comments, then we go back, take another look at it, and see do we want to change it or not to accommodate the concerns that we feel legitimately should be addressed. And I, before it gets to council. Yeah, I think that gives the council. I think they were appreciative of that. Yeah. Because um, they did, they didn't get blindsided at yep. the council meetings. Yeah, and we did it by area when we were addressing specific areas of the town. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll just think about that. I just, thought, I just want to throw that out for process. Did they use yep. the ordinance committee the same way then? To the ordinance committee wasn't back then no. as much. It pretty much went through what was then CPIC. Oh, okay. And. Which became long range planning. Which became, yeah. Technicality. And uh, once it was vetted here, pretty much the ordinance committee took a recommendation from us uh -huh. that said, you know, this basically, this is what we've done. This is how we vetted the situation. And it actually, by that point, we went back multiple occasions to, a, to an area if we needed to. To show the citizens that we actually address their concerns, these are the modifications, got their buy in so that by the time it did get to the council, it was being supported at council um, and, you know, people getting up and, and talking basically in support of the changes. Uh, and it I, made the passing yeah. much easier. I'd, mm -hmm. I'd observe a couple of things though. The Ordinance Committee is a much more active committee these days, and I think they're showing a um, not only a willingness, a desire to be an appropriate buffer between the subcommittees and the ordinance process at council. So include so, them to that meeting. Well, no, and let me, let me explain. My process that I've been doing is using the appropriate committees to vet certain things, and then I take it to ordinance committee. Yeah. Like LD 2003 is 15 ordinances that went through ordinance committee, and now it's going to go through council, and then it'll go back to planning board, and then back to council. Um, but then like sustainability review is review and lighting. And then I'm, my intention is to use this group to review all of the different pieces and make sure they make sense. But I'm not sure how much public yeah. input. Okay, we can, we can talk about yeah. yeah. I, just, I, I don't I, want to leave it here. Yeah, yeah, I just, just want to um, throw that out there. That, that was a process that it, we had and it. It worked well. It was effective. Talk about right. it at some point. I, so. I, I think so. We, we have to also we had a very ex extensive public vetting of the principles of a comprehensive plan that saw participation from all the groups that you're kind of describing. Um, and we have an open public forum here that 
has the agendas posted, has everything done. And and what I'd say is if SEDCO thinks that there are groups in the community that would be particularly impacted, right. invite them to particular meetings of this committee so we can hear their input as we go through these. And that's, the I think, a, a simpler use of time. Um, you don't want to delay the implementation. Correct. Yeah. Because of the exactly. Right. Yeah. 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 I guess. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk offline. Let's say because I don't want, yeah. like I said. It, I think something we should we should chat about. What's our process? The, the scale has changed as well. I wasn't around the way it was previously mm -hmm. done, but common sense and just general observation, you have to take mm -hmm. into account. Sure. Yeah. The scale that yeah. we're talking about now versus what we're talking. Uh, I agree with you, Peter, as far as what you're saying. And I think Mark makes a good point on that one because what you guys were doing back off the, uh, the, the 2006 plan was some much more fundamental changes to the zoning code. Um, this is, for example, as we go through this, there are some particular parties in town will have some opinions on it, but we're not wholesale changing well, major I would elements. say if you're changing from, sh from um, should to shall, that's a big change for some of this. So, and, and, and yeah, you know. that is, but I, but I think um, our comprehensive plan very clearly indicates that we're going to take a more shall or will right. role, um, and uh, and that was part of the comprehensive plan process. Not right. So detail, devils in the details. But yeah, let's we can. I think all of these are, yeah. are good ideas. Let's just. Before we get too far into this, let's talk about yep. um, what Could that be, process would be. I'm envisioning a, a really robust addition to our website, which Eric and I just got trained on so we can <laughs> the planning side and maybe add it, putting some opportunities yeah. for some dialogue and some emails and some direct contact. And then you can help send it yeah. out. To, and rather than like a big public meeting about this one small, yeah. I'm going to well, add three so shows. Awesome. And I guess I think the thought process yeah. was. Yeah. Well, we get the document complete. So if it's 12 months, it's 12 months from now, we hold that meeting. This section by section. Piece by piece. So this yeah. piece is going to go, after it gets done with you all, I'm going to take it to the ordinance committee and then to council and adoption. Yeah. And then we're going to take um, okay. materials. It's probably going to take us some more time, but yeah. we'll take lighting. This sustainability, okay. this group, ordinance council. And so we'll just keep plugging away. Council, at planning board. Planning board and public hearing. <laughs> Um, so, so congratulations. So, so the planning board gets the public hearing part. Yes, and people say, <laughs> yes. "What do you yeah. mean, shall?" Yes, yes. <laughs> and so we do have those processes built in. Yeah. Um, okay. so, but a, a good kind of overview of what we're the madness on our website. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Okay. yeah. Again, between what happens at the planning board and what you go through at Sedco, if you're going to find things in these sections where it's like, oh, that guy is going to be interested. In this. <laughs> That's right. They should be encouraged to participate in our in our meetings. Okay. Okay. Let's just put in the So then um, we go through. We get down. Not a lot of proposals. Then we get the approved plant list. Oh, hold on, I got one before that. In preservation and removal, um, we've got wherever practical existing specimens, tree clusters shall shall be preserved. What I would propose is say existing specimen trees, tree clusters, or other significant vegetation shall be preserved, except where the planning board determines such such preservation to be impractical. So, in other words, there's a positive obligation to preserve. But you can go to the planning board and get them to agree that yeah, this would be silly, um, and and have them agree to it. Oh, what do you mean about that? <laughs> uh, what I think is is how uh, the developers will get around this by removing everything first before they come. To us <laughs> yeah, with a request to put a building here, and I can think of a specific thing that's occurring right now. I would be willing to bet. <laughs> uh, on the corner of Pikes and Scott and Hill Road. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I will say that I this is a really small little section of existence. Let me yes. put it here. I have, I anticipate through conservation and our open space event and our vulnerability assessment that we'll be doing that we'll actually be coming back and coming up with a true tree preservation plan. And okay. we, that'll be a much larger, uh, truly vetted. Project. Okay, that's kind so of the, the, the sort of just the holding area for it with the very minimal language we already have. But on a side note, on a whiteboard, there's a list <laughs> knowing that we are probably going to go there as well. Yeah, and, and, and that would say 
the application is going to be uh, of this to be hard for and I don't mind fighting it. But for instance, existing natural groupings or clusters of trees shall be preserved in parking areas. That what that basically means is the planning board will say, you know, that clump of trees, we're going to preserve that. And you've got to figure out how to build a parking lot around mm -hmm. it. And that's going to take away from the amount of spaces you thought you had. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it, it's in the implementation that the anxiety comes. Yep. Um, do I think we should be preserving where we're appropriate because the, the, the trees are really good. I mean, it's a really good clump. They're really good trees. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, I foresee where it's going mm -hmm. and that's okay. But it, what it's going to be interesting is the planning board meetings. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, but you can in some ways potentially solve some of that through a site visit. I mean, it was not uncommon for us to do site visits. We do site visits usually before something has happened to the land. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. When they first come But that's also then before we, it would have to be done at a sketch plan level so that we could see what they have planned, what part actually they say, well, this is going to be a parking lot. See the plants, it's going to talk a lot. Good. Well, this clump over here, you must preserve. Right. Now that we know that that's in the parking lot, because if that's where the building is going to be, this ordinance doesn't address doesn't apply. That. Yep. Doesn't apply. Right. I get it. Yeah. Robin? Uh, I just have uh, two comments, and I think we, we've already um, addressed one is making sure that preserving trees isn't limited to the parking areas. You've discussed that at other places as well. Um, and second is I, I agree with um, Peter that you know empowering the planning board to make some sort of uh, decisions is 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 great. But I've been with you know I'm not the chair like Rachel, but I, I I understand what she's saying as far as developers will try to get around it as as best they can. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that they would be preserved in other areas as well, and this wasn't just limiting it to parking areas. I would suggest that. You know, put this in the parking lot. That um, what things like this mean is that the planning board needs to be actively involved, substantially involved, earlier in the process. In other words, when it first becomes a we're thinking of doing something on this piece of property. Mm -hmm. This is what we're thinking of doing. Um, Does that mean like everybody does a sketch plan? Well, basically, it, pretty much it would have to be, I think. Uh, and there needs to be some teeth that actually would come in the way the planning board meeting was handled. In that the planning board at that time would be very clear. Uh, and it could be a straw vote could be clear that there's a straw vote for what I did on Monday night, which was pull out the waivers and have people talk about them so that the applicant understood the whole band application wasn't going through, period. Um, if they didn't change a couple of things. Uh, so that the what the planning board does at the sketch plan level is provide ideas and suggestions. It kind of tries to make clear if something's going to fly, but we don't take a vote. At that point, we really don't have the authority to say, it, look, if you continue with this, <laughs> this is not, period, this will not meet the ordinances. So it's a combination of how the planning board operates, which is a good discussion to have. Yeah, and, um, and, and Rachel, my desire was to give the planning board that ability to have that early insertion. If you have that early insertion, which is by the time it gets to us, yeah. the app, and we understand this, the applicant has spent a couple of hundred thousand dollars yeah, yeah. on architects, engineers, and everything yeah. else. That tends to vest them in it. Yeah. <laughs> and it tends to, to, right, to vest them in it and tends for the planning board, understandably, to say, well, maybe how could we make this work? And I don't mind saying, how can we make this work? Yeah. But 
Well, I've had uh, several difficulties um, with that sort of investment that the uh, the developer has made because I would really dearly love the ability to say at sketch plan, I'm sorry, this building is too long to go back. The trouble not, is, the trouble is Rachel, building. you make it look easy. So it, uh, in a certain way, I, I have no idea how the planning board uh, accomplishes what the planning board does. I have a quick question. About I, said, I, said it, I sit at home and plot things out. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell me your secrets. <laughs> I have a quick question about trees. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Rachel clumps of precious or untouchable trees, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, when a property becomes uh, obviously developable and beyond developable, somebody's bought it to develop. Does the town currently have descriptions of what these precious trees are that would immediately uh, tell the developer, ah, here, willows and oaks have to work around those. I know something a little about what environmental precious trees are. Little knowledge is a dangerous thing. My question is, should the town have identification of natural resources that would immediately tell the Trigger developer something I'm going to have to think okay. about this one? Yeah, let, let, let me narrow that just a little bit. Um, we have in the ordinances the concept of specimen trees. And a specimen tree is 23 inches in diameter at breast height. Now, frankly, if it's a wolf pine, I wouldn't call that a specimen tree, even if it's a giant. <laughs> but we otherwise, I mean, that's that's it on specimen trees. I think if there is a tree that or a plant um, that Maine considers protected, I don't think we take any, I don't know if Maine has such a place. I know in Rhode Island, the uh, lady slipper is protected. They are and, and if they are here, we, we actually got nothing that says you must develop or tell us are there, lady, are there any protected Maine species? If there are protected Maine species, then what do we do with them? Are they transplantable? Must they be, if they are, can we say to the developer, you may transplant, you must transplant these into a further protected area away from that's you know permanently protected? I don't know that we yeah. have that ability. Should we have that ability? So so there, there are some things to, to look at. And, and in other cases, a clump of trees and undergrowth, if that should be protected, it's in the eye of the beholder. In other words, I may look at it and say, you know, that visual, the people coming into this parking lot, that visual is really something that is important, classic, um, and part of the beauty of Scarborough. It's I can subjective. Say that all I want, and it means nothing, but subjective. Yeah, it's very. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, Marvin's your point and Robin's your point. That's what I, we are missing a whole big section of an ordinance. And that's what I was alluding to that I think that's what we'll see probably next year with some timing for actual preservation, conservation, and, and those sorts of things. Um, I will say, I found lady slippers in my woods in my backyard. Mm -hmm. Did not move them, them. <laughs> when I did look them up. I'm like, what is that really cool plant? Um, so, yeah, I think that's a, what we have now is very minimal. And then I just kind of set it up to be a holding place. And then I think we're going to have something much grander. Yeah, I, 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 I think part of the interim step, though, is to give that greater authority mm -hmm. to the planning board as an interim step. Mm -hmm. so. With enough guidelines that we could justify it for. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yep. The only other question or thought that I have in, in terms of placement of items. Should we somewhere, and again, I'm thinking of development, development costs, et cetera. How do we help protect the developer from all of a sudden coming across a, a stopper for their project further down the road? Is there some verbiage that we can put in that would indicate 
that the developer may want to either have discussions with planning department mm -hmm. to make sure that they understand that there's going to be um, the potential of coming across an area of trees, et cetera, that we want to protect down the road so that as they're walking their property early on in the process, they can see that, oh yeah, we better be careful of this. But just make them aware, even if we have to reference a different section in the conservation area or something of that <clears throat> nature that maybe has more specifics, I'm just thinking we need to let them know early on in the process that they need to be on the lookout for something that they have to prepare for. That, that their investment in architectural drawings won't protect them from. Correct. So, so I, it just. Yeah, I think so. I, we have been, we don't require it, but I've been telling everybody that the only way to get to meet with us is to have a pre-application meeting. Yeah. And that involves all the different departments. But we're also working on new checklists and applications, and that's a great um Try and make it really simple. So when you have that pre application, what's required? And that's a great point. Like trunk, clumps of trees, it show us those natural resources. Yep. So at that sketch plan, we can have that conversation. Mm -hmm. so but I mean, it's that's like great... they got to identify, yes. you know, vernal pools. They've got to identify sure. other items, make this part of the list right. of what should be identified. And, and my, I'm, I want to get there to where a, um, a pre-application is required and then you have to give us the date before you submit. And I would say since I've been here like nine months, I think 90% of the people have followed that without yep. it being required. Yep. I would strongly encourage. Do, do you, <laughs> um, Eric, ever, I mean, do you walk sites before the applicant comes with a... I Google Earth them uh, to see what I'm looking at, but I don't walk sites. Okay. No. I didn't not know what staff did. Typically, typically, there's, there's not. I mean, no. I appreciate that. I mean, <laughs> I'm not. Mean, to be perfectly honest, yeah. but yeah. we do, I, especially me being new to the area, I try, I drive by a lot of places and I yep. like do aerial views like, oh, this is by this. And we had a zoning case the other day. I'm like, I'm not familiar with this. I need to see where this is. Okay. I yeah. feel, you know. Um, but I, just, I you know, again, like identifying wetlands mm -hmm. and all the other items that. I, I, I think it's a great some idea. Of that, some of that's already listed in mm -hmm. in the standards and the site review. Okay. It's less there may be a better way to present it in terms of a checklist. Yep. Um yes, they're supposed to identify their own pools and they're supposed to have done a wetland survey within the next number of years. Right. That includes the identification. Right. Uh but what happens is if you get a new engineer, they miss stuff in the, the ordinances and then get mm -hmm. Then become surprised. Um, and then you have folks who figure, well, you know, I bet I can get a way out of this. I bet I can get around this by doing yep. X, Y, and Z. And then they come to us and say, no, you can't get around that. Yeah. Uh, so there's, there's some areas where there's a lack of understanding of the process. And that's where pre application. Yep extraordinarily helpful nope. because I've noticed that when new people come and work and it's clear they've worked with the planning board, their applications tend to get through Back. a lot faster because sure. they've done yep. what they're supposed to do. Yep. So it's the, there's That's that. the new factor mm -hmm. as opposed yeah. to both, folks who've been doing it forever. And those folks who've been doing it forever are sitting there and say, I bet I get a waiver on this. That's true. And then as we know on Monday night, that doesn't work. Well, and, and always. And these, it's not going to work. These conversations too are good. I see my role and Eric's role and our department's role in, in those free applications to identify you're going to need to do this. Right. It might not say it's, it shall be required, but I'm telling you, you're going to need to do it. Yeah. And I have no problem doing that for <laughs> before it gets a planning board. I think I'm gaining more and more of an understanding of what's important for the town, what the different interests are, and where those those hot buttons are. So that's where I see those pre-application meetings really helpful. Even if the ordinances aren't perfect, we can definitely steer the ship in a certain okay. way. Uh, and, 
just one comment about the, you know, once you're all through with this, it could be helpful to everyone, including the council, if, if it were possible to do some illustrations. You know, let's take the Cabela's parking lot, which everybody hates, and say, if we had the design standards, what would the Cabela's parking lot look like? Mm -hmm. And that would help people, you know, the engineers as well, well understand what we're looking for. You might take a ballot, you might also take none such. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Most much, but also types. the salt, whatever the climbing salt, is, you yeah, know, salt, we change uh, the trees along, yeah. and so you're driving into it. Yeah. Right. No yeah. comparison. Right. Just a couple of illustrations, and we may need to hire a landscape architect to do that, but that seems a reasonable and and perhaps prudent way to help illustrate. Because I think sometimes it's hard for people to understand what this means, you know. No, that's a great idea. And, and then we can add that again. Again, par parking lot. When thinking about it, um, literally parking lot. But um, the planning board doesn't. The the only limitation, real limitation on parking, we have the minimum, which we can waive. Um, we have no maximum, on in terms of parking, except for the amount of coverage. Which means that Costco, they came under the amount of coverage um, for that lot. For we, non permeable. Yeah, for non permeable. We couldn't say, I'm sorry, cut out this parking aisle and cut out this parking aisle. Couldn't say that. I mean, we could try. We found other ways to get the cuts and stuff down. But um, it's it's a struggle because then the planning board is playing. How do we shuffle things? Well, we get away. How, how do we get away with something that we know we, sh <coughs> we know, given the different ordinance, we wouldn't have to struggle with. Um, so, taking a look at at parking maximum would also add to the landscaping, yeah. basically. Okay. Uh, quick time check. We have a half hour left. <laughs> okay. So I think I've got a few things to add to this and got notes for some other sections to work on. There's the approved plant species list, species list and then some reference for um, the basis. And then if you have anything that you would like to change or comment on on that, feel free to do it here or just you can also shoot me an email and we can get some more comments on these. I did not go through this list. This list came from um, conservation. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's my question on that. It's like, does it change? I would imagine it shouldn't change often, but does it? It shouldn't change terribly okay. often, no. Um, yeah, I I as I look at as I look at at the list, um, we're going to have a very green town. We're not going to have a flower town. We're not going to have a colors. We're going to have green because that's what's coming most that they've got here. Um, the push on the native species is fine, but let me give you a couple of things. Daffodils are not native. They don't have daffodils in here. Now the town has got daffodils. Uh, tulips. They don't have tulips in here. That's non-native. But they, they don't have some things that provide some light. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of green stuff. Trees, they don't have lilacs. Lilacs are not native. But they've been in the United States since Jamestown. Uh, Ajuga, pasta, these, these aren't there. They don't have the good uh, shade trees. They don't have good shade um, plantings. So, no rhododendrons? Hmm? No sure. rhododendrons. I, no azaleas. Azaleas, no. Nope. Yeah, kind of interesting. So, I, I think we need to be, be in the effort to come up with only native plants. They have cut down the non native areas. Um, the acceptable primitive species are the, basically the non natives. Um, they cut out all of the hybrids that have grown up over the years. No roses, none. 
Um, I went through and I took a look at uh, the um, origins of a lot of these uh, day lilies. They, they are common as hell around here. They are not native. They are listed as an alternative. So I would like to see acceptable alternative species expanded to provide us with, with the color. And, and a way to do that, they have echinacea. Um, echinacea is a native species, but it's not just purple. It's been hybridized with all sorts of different colors. So don't, don't limit it to purple. Um, uh, the lilac again, uh, there are different varieties of lilacs. There is one that's invasive. I, and that's the tree, um, or it's listed as invasive, but I have no problem with the list per se, except <laughs> it, it should include more. And the other thing I have, a, I guess, a semi-concern about is an awful lot of these native species, the question becomes, how much is available? How much is available here in landscape? Um, in the landscapers, how can they get some of these as opposed to those things that are more common that we see both in housing and in already in um, uh, in some of the development? I applaud, applaud the uh, ambition of this. I, I lead a nonprofit here in Scarborough about controlling invasive plants and promoting native plants. Yeah. So I know way too much about it. Mm -hmm. But uh, so I, I mean, this would be like music to those ears. Uh, something I might be able to offer in practical terms, people like flowers, people like color. You're exactly right as far as my knowledge of this goes and uh, I'm an amateur, so it's limited. The uh, there's a percentage, very briefly, of in the range of sixty percent to seventy percent native to forty percent or thirty percent of what you're talking about, and that is practically in this area agreed upon that that's pretty good if we can err on the side of having more natives than the. And natives provide food for the caterpillars, which the baby birds need. They're very practical. We like birds. So we want natives and that sort of thing that the rhododendron don't or otherwise don't really. They're pretty. We like them, but they don't work in the ecosystem that we're attempting to develop. Anyway, so if something, I would suggest something such as a 60% native. Maybe if you want to be ambitious, 70% native and 30% alternative, and then expand the alternative list to include those things that you're talking about. I, I, think, I think that's a good way to go. Um, mm -hmm. It provides balance. Those people who only want to use native, I think you could say oh. that it's fine. Yeah, sure. Um, but that people have the ability, the developers have the ability to put in those flowers that we now really consider pretty native. But mm -hmm. if you go back 200 years, no, they're not. Yeah. Um, well, these are technical descriptions. Yeah. It's, 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 this is the sort of thing that isn't subjective. Okay. We're talking about native in very technical terms, and it does have to do with promoting the insects and that sort of thing. One of the things that, that we do do, and I don't know, I, didn't, I kind of missed it someplace. Um, I'm not sure it's going to be in here someplace. It, is that for areas of large, large areas of grass, but as those in um, uh, solar farms, let's say, uh, we require that they put in a mix of meadow flowers, of pollinator flowers. Uh, and that that encourages the, the honeybees and the hummingbirds and, and all of those um, so that we do have areas that are very, very well populated with native species for the 
for the, the birds and the bees. Well, while I, while I lead an organization that is uh, advocates for this strongly, it isn't a religious experience for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, yeah. One thing I'd observe is that what we're, what we kind of are saying is that the two sentences to, that native species shall be used to the greatest extent possible in all landscaping designs. That sentence may be inconsistent with the next one. The plants on this list have derived from a number of sources to inspire a greater landscape variety. So if we use the greatest extent possible of native species, we may not end up with variety and the kind of visual variety um, and the sort of 65, 35 balance that you're talking about, Marvin. So we might want to just rewrite that those sentences to incorporate the ideas that we're talking about here. Yeah, something like 64. Yeah, the 64. Yeah. That would be very, I mean, very good, right in the middle lane of what the environmentalists and ecologists are working hard to achieve and ambitious at the same time on the side of yeah. the native plant. Yeah. So, and then, um, beef up some of the alternatives that have been with us for a long time yeah. and, and that we kind of think of as all of Maine. the things that I thought of as Maine when I yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, leaving out any anything that's invasive well not, and, I, and I think that the invasive piece is the key yeah, yeah. you know if it's, if it's not on the invasive plant list contact you know the da 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 um for right. reference that's actually a good you could just kind of add a generic like if it's not invasive it's okay. Well, or or yeah, yeah. 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 So if we, if we, yeah. if we something, falls, yeah. it falls within the forty percent. Yeah, because right. the yes. Species yes. Is as long as that's in there, right? Yeah, that makes sense. That we yeah. pile that. up, and then we don't have to exhaustively okay. lay out everything. That's yeah, what, what's what's allowable and what isn't. Okay, okay. Get so I'm gonna be able to make it really generic that part. Yeah. Okay. As a as a part time beekeeper, I would hate to eliminate rhododendrons. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you being neighbors, thank me for putting the word in this. So, yeah, you're right. One, one last thing that I would add. I don't know if we're close on this. Is um, address completion time frames for landscaping. Um, you know, is it within so much of occupancy, or is it so much uh, as far as approval? Because what happens is. Developers may say, gee, I've got a year, you know, I can do this whenever. Yeah. And even though I was checking with Eric before, um, developers can say, well, you know, we do so much money in escrow. That does not necessarily address the completion issue. And then it falls back on planning staff and code enforcement yeah. to try to keep a ticker file to make sure that it's done. So how do we begin to address a completion time frame? Uh, for for um, for this, I know they can't do plant trees, for instance, in the middle of winter. But there needs to be, I think, some kind of um, time frame. The pilot completion of each phase, something like that. Something we can strengthen it a little bit. I've never had to deal with it. I've never given a CEO without all your stuff done. Um, so that's another. Oh, good. Don't do that. I know. <laughs> that's <laughs> fine. Your stuff, man. <laughs> Trying it in March. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, but I think that's good. We can add it in here and strengthen that section up. So at least we have some work to, to help us. Yeah, because I, I know staff ends up yes. on the back end and trying to. And it's great that we have 50 fair. grand in an account at the right. town for but five still, years, but it doesn't meet the intent of what was approved. Now you've got code enforcement yeah. and planning and all the that. Right, right. 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 Yeah. 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 Or it may just be a letter of credit, too, which means there is no money. Right. Okay. That's good. I'll add that in the like. Anything else for this one? <laughs> Before um, we leave this, what would you all like to see this again? Okay. So I'll incorporate the things that we've talked about. Um, I'll also give you a red line of what the commercial design standards will look like once this one goes with the strikers, but you'll kind of see how it would look and then what else would be helpful. That's, that's it as far as I can think. Yeah. This is more of a question process question in regards to when you go to ordinance committee mm -hmm. uh, with this, I would be happy to attend if that's okay. um, something that 
is not going to upset that apple cart. Oh, so sure. I think that'd be great. But I'll do what I can then. Okay. It's the um second Thursday of every month. Is it something I could potentially zoom into? Yes. Okay. And they're at four. Okay. Four to six. Okay. Um if you need planning board comment as well, I can okay. I can attend her. Uh, and on page three of the design standards, I, I just want to reference to the fact that I have no idea what a donor is. <laughs> it's about the fourth and fifth uh, down on the list. Gables Gables and donors. Donors. Oh, you're on the next section. Yeah, all right. I'm sorry. Page three of the design standards. I think you want outdoor seating or design or, or dining areas, not sifting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Unless sifting is a new thing, I just haven't heard it. <laughs> it's it's that you know drat auto correct. No, this is actually a weird capture. When you turn a PDF into Word, it mm -hmm. has done some weird things. Um, so let me see. Sixth, sixth bullet. It's down. probably dormer and night. Yeah, oh yeah, it's a dormer. Too. Yeah, and no, the night yeah. for a night, <laughs> night bullet down. So this one. Um, Outdoor seating. Yes, yeah, if that's the sift, not sifting. The multiple entries are provided to pedestrian entrance, not plural. I think that's it's actually it is crossed out. It's just really yeah. cool. Yeah, it's a really small <laughs> it's just a little dash. Mm -hmm. that yeah. A sense of individuality it just means fun it's versus or uh, multi tenant. Oh, 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 oh. Where are you? Pardon me. Page three. We're just kind of just so kind of doing on the, the next section. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. My high level concern on reading this one, there's nothing in here that comes close to addressing a density question. It's not in design standards. I so think of density as relating to design. Um, because otherwise, you know, there are plenty of New England towns that are incredibly spread out. Um, and I don't, and, and that's not, while it is not a design decision maybe that made them spread out, it, is, it becomes a design question. It's in zoning. And zoning. Zoning? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to. It's all zoning. Yep. Density, setbacks, um, your uh, setbacks to the street, your height, all that is in the zoning. Yeah. And it changes by zone. So that's why right. you couldn't put it yeah. in something like this. Yeah. Well, this is commercial, so right. No, um, I understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so um, and, and, and in that yes, sense, we do. yeah. yeah. We have a lot of commercial zones. Oh, yes, we do. Um, yeah. So fair, fair point. I mean, I follow, I follow I, your logic. Yeah, um, I, I think under but it's up. if there can be a in zone, you 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 kind of refer to the zoning right. ordinance uh, and then control and zoning. And if it can be explicitly said, uh, further information or further. Criteria for development is contained in the I think, zoning ordinance. I think that would be a helpful clarifier. Or, or, or what if? Well, it doesn't. It doesn't actually actually say that. Right. Just got to start with zoning ordinance. The zoning. Well, it talks about the event of a conflict or inconsistency. Yeah. Um, instead of saying there's also positive information. Correct. Positive requirements in other zoning yeah. ordinances. Which can also be your checklist piece of free application. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Autumn. Yes. In a couple of places, and maybe more, you refer to the 
or the tax refers to the applicable reviewing authority. That comes out of state statutes because not every town has a planning board. But I think in our case, we're going to change that to the planning board. The planning board. That's a good point. I think I see it on page 14 of the. Uh, it's on it a few places. Thank you. People sure. The woman says applicable review before I would change it to the planning board. Okay, perfect. So again, what's in here is what's existing and right. then reorganized. And then um, the proposed, the fund stuff is on page 11, where we start to talk about additional requirements for village. And so that goes back to what we did with our tour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm all for fun stuff. <laughs> There's one new here. I'm trying to find it. I saw when I was reading it before. And, um, something about how one of the criteria for viewing is, is how it looks from a moving vehicle. Um, I, I can't find it right now, but I know it's in here. On three sides. Um, yeah. Um, and, and it was, I found that to be interesting. <laughs> We're trying to make this a lot we speak a lot in this about human scale and then we say while well, you're driving your SUV you get 60 miles an hour you should like it too which is not human scale <laughs> so um I just wanted to I'll find it eventually I'm sorry I should have marked it but... maybe we should say by walking or uh on your bike or some, simply say that it should be uh, three sides of the building should be considered beautiful in sense um, and, and should be developed as um, Pretty as possible. I'm, I'm moved you know, but but basically that that the building is more than the front facade. I moved here from Arkansas, and the expression there when you were, when you were building something was doesn't look so bad um, from the road on a fast horse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it almost sounds as though you're trying to give some excuse for fall. Yeah, so it says. So it's yeah, yeah. aesthetically like on three sides, on the three sides that are visible to a power of Yeah. Okay, it's actually on page one. The the architecture that offers a positive experience from three perspectives by the motorist driving along the road corridor, which is the first listed one. By the pedestrian beauty of the building up close and in relation to surrounding buildings at time to the community's identity. So our first listed priority is for the motorist driving by to enjoy the view. Yeah, but that's how you get around here. I mean, it makes it, there's a logical. Well, there, there's a logical, but that this isn't a walking community yet. Well, we're headed for that. We're and that's the thing. <laughs> I said, yeah. Good luck. Not in my life. <laughs> it's a bad thing, Peter, because I will tell you that I'm one of those people. As I drive by, I look at everything and yeah. get annoyed very easily. And I'm, yeah, I'm too. Don't get. Don't, don't, don't. An, this is from the uh, commercial design standard, but that's you know you it should look nice as you're driving, as you're walking, and from your neighbor. So I don't well, think that's a bad. What, what I'd say is, um, on the Route One quarter, totally agree. On the Haggis Parkway district, totally agree. And the Towns Village Centers district, I, I disagree. I don't care how it looks from a moving car in a, in, a, in, a, in the village centers that we're trying to to put together. That should be primarily from the pedestrian, pre pedestrian perspective, and. And Maybe reorder them though, because I think if they look good from a pedestrian perspective, they're going to look for, good from the car. I would so I would it, totally agree with that, like but that's car. not how we've ordered this. That's not what we've asked for. Maybe reorder it then. Is that, that mm -hmm. like where the pedestrian, the human experience is first right. and foremost? Yes. I got it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's nine twenty. I lost it. I was looking at it on the computer, but I can't say it anymore. Yeah, where you go? I, I have a, a agenda process question that looking at the agenda today, I was thinking about for agenda, not this one, but for future. May we totally change the subject? Pardon me. 
may we add an item, generally speaking, for other business in, in case one of us would like to. Yeah, in, in fact, as I was going down through this, one of the things very similarly thought of was uh, comments. Any other other comments from the members of the committee? Same same concept. Other business, whatever we sure. want to put it under, mm -hmm. that's fine. Because so after it, public comment, um, I would say before. Before, public yeah, comment. I would think so. I would think so. So way to introduce the yep. subject. Yeah. Great. So I get. I mean, the assumption here is that we're going to continue with these standards at the next meeting. Yes. Um, and my only other thought process was, in terms of timing, um, should we proceed to staff up dates at this time? Certainly, certainly. The only thing that I have right now um, tonight at council, we are doing a presentation or workshop on LD two thousand three. Then uh, tonight at council, um, that first reading is LD two thousand three. They're also discussing their budget. Um, GMO and the rate of growth. Also doing a workshop on the rate of growth yeah. today. That's why Alan asked when you said pretty yeah. crowded. Yeah. 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 Today was a pretty packed day. Um, then we also have um, the all board summit tomorrow evening. I think if I sent you an email, I said tomorrow and get it in the space. Yeah. Right. Sorry, Rick. Uh, Monday night was so long. I've already right. skipped that. <laughs> move forward today. So we have that uh, tomorrow <laughs> evening at that is at the hub from six to eight. So you're all invited to that. And I think uh, there's a sign up that's included on that email. Just like, hey, we have an or if you're planning to go and just let me know and I'll sign you up. Yeah, I think you're Magda good. already did, right? Yeah. yeah. You're good. I'm going to be coming from the airport. So okay. I'm going to try. Okay. And I'm saying that. My husband's going out to Portland, Oregon for a long way. I'm sorry. I'm yep. See you there. Yep. It's fine. See two participants. So it's like online. It's just Eric and okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> just one Just one Yeah. <laughs> did I, did I make and I cannot attend. Yeah. 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 I'm, yeah. I'm out of country. Okay. We're going to um, do that next if we're done with I'm, staff. I'm good. Thank you. Eric, anything? I'm all set. Thank you. All right. I, I just, uh, in the light of the panel stations we've had today, I do suggest that you both watch the planning board meeting uh, from this last Monday night um, for a couple of reasons. It's, it, it's also very long. And listen to the discussion at the end of it that the planning board had in terms of looking forward at some um, issues, uh, handling some issues out of the town center process. Okay. Uh, the first item on the planning board, the first applicant on the planning board came from a new engineer. Um, it was a relatively simple application <clears throat> that was filed. The presentation from the engineer was right on target. In other words, it was a good model for how to take what you want, present it to the planning board, um, receive comments, uh, and um, first time we saw it, we passed it. Uh, it, became, it was done right. Mm -hmm. And there, yeah. there are a couple of events of, like those a few years ago when Sashi Meisner yeah. did the eclipse. She, that was a model of how to develop and present your application to the planning board and how to work with the planning board on getting something through. Um, then later, Later on, uh, there was a discussion around um, parking and percentage of coverage uh, on a Downs project. Um, and the, the upshot um, was, I think, unexpected for the applicant. Um, and I think it was about the first time in a while that the planning board said, stop it. Um, and sent them back. And I think, I suspect they anticipated the project would pass and it did not. And for very specific reasons around parking and landscaping. Mm -hmm. um, then later on, the three I homes project 
came up and was passed. It had almost the same problems as the Hygus Market Street project had in terms of parking and landscaping. They approached it in a different fashion. They approached their requests in a different fashion. Uh, they offered proof, they offered evidence of what they were trying to do. They passed. So there are two examples of how the planning board and the developers either work together or wrestle with things uh, and the direction the planning board is starting to go in. Um, then, and finally, in the comments at the end, as we began, began to talk about being more proactive going forward in terms of parking, stormwater, landscaping, uh, and basically development. Um, I think it'd be interesting to, so that you get a, a sense of the size of projects now that we're dealing with the complexity of the projects and how we're, we're looking at what's an extremely intense development uh, and very important development process. So and the implications. And the implications. Um, so it was a long meeting. Uh, our comments wound up around 1020. We had four, I think we had three things hanging, hanging over. Well, we got further than I thought. Uh, I think um, we have about three things still hanging from that meeting that we couldn't get to in 15 items. Four. <laughs> four or five. Four. Yeah, and 15 <laughs> items coming for is more or less uh, in terms of public hearing. So we're probably going to hold them <laughs> for follow-up meeting to try to clear some stuff out. Um, but it, it, it was uh, it was a long meeting. Um, I was actually happy with the, the conclusion. Uh, I think the planning board is really starting to focus appropriately um, where I think it's appropriate. So I was happy. I don't think the Downs was happy, but I was happy. Is the process yeah. working? Yeah, I, I, some of the, some of the things that we're looking at here is going to work a lot better for us. Um, we have Allagash coming up at the next hearing, next meeting. Nice. When there's more clarity, when you know what. Well, yeah, what, well, <laughs> we won't have the we won't have the clarity by then. Right. Um, exactly. But so I don't want this going on way too long. Yeah. But uh, anyhow, I think there were some parts of the hearing. Um, that I wasn't terribly thrilled with, but but other parts that I thought were really heading in a good direction, uh, and sending clear messages to developers about process okay. and direction. Thank you, Karen. I apologize to you because when I asked for staff comments, I didn't ask for yours. I'm okay. That's good. I just have a question for Rachel. Then. Yep. yep. Um, you're you're. Were you talking about back, backwards BMP site plan is the first yes. one? That's the one. That's the one. Yeah. Okay. Backwards BMP. Who did it? That was sixty six hundred square foot. So that was. I mean, it's, it, it was it was easy. I mean, it's a minor yeah. minor thing. Um, stuff they wanted to do, but the presentation was clear, and the applicant, even though it was minor, new to the board, first time I've seen her, um, and it was handled the way it really should have been in terms of the preparation that they did working with the, the staff. I believe they held three meetings with you guys. Yeah, and we we had, had pretty consistent communication with them um, starting it as a minor review. So I think that, that certainly helped. Yeah. So in other words, it was, a, it, it was a process that worked for a very small project, yeah. but but it shows what you can do uh, and it shows a good, a good process. She um, also learned from the previous meeting from sitting in the audience till 10. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, she learned. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Portia, comments, other business? Nothing for me. Thank you. All right. Peter? No, that's your. I just want to say thank you to Rachel for handling the planning board as professionally as she does. I guess. Thank you. Thank you. Rick, you good? Marvin? Good. I'm all set. Next meeting. July 12th. Is July the, that's right. Remember? Yep, July the 12th. Uh, I will most likely be attending by Zoom.
Move to adjourn. I just need to ask for public comment first, Pardon. but thank you. We have no one online. Okay, I have a motion to second. adjourn and I have a second. <laughs> Any discussion? Yes. Oh, no, 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 all of you pre, yeah, you just go on that. So all in favor, I should say. We're good. Thank you. Call it.